It's Miss Seashell. Mystery. We're back again for our next edition of Foo Ventures. And we just gave you a teaser and asking you if you knew where we were today at Oatland Island. Those of you that have been here before, does anybody know where we are? Type your answers in. We're sheltered. Oatland Island Wildlife Center. We, we are at Oatland Island Wildlife Center, live streaming. Georgia, we are. United States. Whose exhibit are we in, Mr. E? We're in the Nine Banded Armadillo exhibit. Uh, Decipus novum cinctus. Decipus novum cinctus. So we have two little armadillos running around right now. We're going to make sure you see them if you don't <laughs> see them at this moment. Um, they might be a little camera shy because they just went and ducked underneath the log as soon as we started rolling. We're doing number two. So that's why. armadillo, that name, armadillo. Does anybody out there know what armadillo means? Armadillo. You can probably in, guess. In Espanol. Yeah, in Espanol. They were named by Spanish conquistadors when they came over to the Americas. Okay, anybody out there? Any guesses out there? Is anybody out there? Give me a thumb up if you're out there listening. Armadillo is the little, little. armored one. Dio. The armored little Dio. armored one. That's what armored. the name means. And you probably are familiar with the three-banded armadillo, right? Hi, Leslie. Dr. Mailer. Dr. Mailer's with us. Logan from NC, nice to see you. Do you guys know your vet's watching? Yeah. They're out there walking around. They just went ducked underneath the log. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Leslie. They heard the name vet. No, just, just in case. Okay, I'm gonna grab one. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, I'm gonna come a little closer so you can get a nice, good, close look at, I think this is Rocky. This is Rocky, our girl. Hi, so say hi to the people out there, Rocky. What you're looking at is the belly, which a lot of people don't see. That exposed belly is covered in hair. That gives you a little bit of a hint on what type of animal they are. They're a vertebrate, of course, but they kind of look a little reptilian with those scales and scoots. But they are not a scaly, scooted reptile. They are a bony, scooted, covered mammal of all things. So very interesting. They are related to the Xenarthen. So if you think about our anteaters, they kind of look like an anteater or even sloths. They're related to those. But these guys specifically are related to an extinct group of animals that had very bony plates on their back just like them and that were very, very big. So they're very small now and they've actually changed their diet. They used to be way, way back when, millions of years ago, herbivores and now they are insectivores. I want to say hi to some people out there that are tuning in. We have Aria and Reese. Ooh. Hello from Pace, Florida. Thanks Florida. for joining us. FLA in the um, house. We want to just thank the Keener family for being such attentive. I know you're not Keeners, but um, you are to us because Pam Keener is our person. We love her. Um, but thank you for joining us, all of you out there. Um, so I moved their log a little bit closer <laughs> so maybe you can see what they're doing. Um, remember to type in your questions, interact with us, tell us things that you want to tell us. Um, say hello, tell us where you are. So far, Florida's in the house. It's our farthest away state. We have Elena Abbey. I think I think North Carolina's farther than Florida. Is it? We have North Carolina? Didn't yeah. We have North Carolina. And we have Eric's parents here from Illinois. Yeah. They got a snow. Aspen, Aspen asked a really, really good question about do they really curl up in a ball and roll like they do in cartoons? Um, they do have a lot of defense mechanisms, but the nine band specifically cannot roll up into a ball. Michelle mentioned the three-banded armadillo. The three-banded armadillo can roll up into a oh. ball and tuck his little head in, and they can actually um, roll, but it wouldn't be like rolling for them to move around and get places. It would be if a predator was batting them around or pushing them around trying to get inside. So it's a defense mechanism, and typically they wouldn't do that um, unless they were going to be predated on. Someone's gonna eat them. I have a meat stick here. Yeah, that's what their diet in it. So their diet is a mixture of some omnivore pellets. They've got a little bit of fruit and veggies in there. They've got some ground up insects. They've got pole crickets and mealworms. And they've got a little bit of a, a bird-based diet that we have too, the ground meat product that gives them some good solid protein. So they're going crazy can as you can that? see. They really, really find food with their face. They're rooting animals. So they're going around digging, digging, digging. And then when they, once they find food, they eat it very fast. They Whoa, Greta speeders. in Ohio. Hi, Greta. No Ocala. Hi, from Ocala, Florida. Florida. Awesome. Ocala. Logan wants to know what they eat, and Mystery was just telling you about that. 
Oh, um, yeah. And they are eating right now. Mr. E stuffed their diet into a tube to make them work a little bit because, you know, captive animals need to um, use a brain a little bit more than normal than just eating off a plate. So sometimes we do stuff like this. And we put these logs in here this morning. Does anybody know why we put logs in here oh, for an armadillo? Yeah. What on earth do they want to eat in a log? Are they eating the wood? What are they eating? Fungus? What do you think? Type your answers in and let us know. All right, get some good questions come in, you guys. Excellent questions. Lucy and Bella. Hello, Lucy and Bella. So someone asked about Daddy their, Derek. their teeth. Their teeth are really amazing. This is a reproductive reproduction of a skull. And so you can kind of see their, their top jaw, their skull, and then their bottom jaw. And they have these little peg-like teeth. So they're kind of round and they kind of stick up. And those are used for crushing um, and then kind of breaking their food into smaller pieces as they crush it up and then they'll swallow um, everything in kind of a big gob together. But they'll store some food in their mouth. They're not really very grinding teeth for good um, vegetable eating. They're not going to eat a lot of vegetable matter or fruits, um, but they are going to eat mostly insects and those larvas that we talked about. Um, and they're going to eat quite a bit, quite a bit of earthworms as well. They may eat some small vertebrates like amphibians. Um, they might eat bird eggs. Um, in Florida, it's a really big problem because they've learned how to dig up sea turtle nests and they actually eat a lot of sea turtle eggs um, in Florida. So they're actually trapping them and removing them from those areas where they're causing a really detrimental impact. So really cool teeth. You need know, a program and usually we walk her before we use her because she'll poop. Like just walking kind of, um, it gets, gets her, it gets everything moving, right? And so um, I was watching her walk around and all of a sudden she's digging and she's chomping on something. Like I'm like, what on earth are you eating? Because it was like big, you know, her mouth was open really wide. She had dug up a spade foot toad and was uh -huh. eating it. So Gross. eat toads too. Ashley wants to know how big do they get? <laughs> well, the nine banded armadillo, this is pretty much, they're kind of small on the nine banded side. Yeah. Um, but you know there's an extinct species of armadillo that they say the burrow was so big you could drive a Volkswagen Beetle. Yeah, they're, they're as big as a small car and weigh just as much as Into well. Into their burrow. Yeah. But they're extinct, so you don't have to worry about that. Yeah. Look Chesney and Clay and Clay from Long County. Where's Long County? Is that California? Long County. Oh, in Georgia. Georgia. Awesome. Um, all right, we got teeth questions. Oh. I can't really read Don because you're. <laughs> I, I got it. I yeah. got it. Okay. Finnegan. Okay. My favorite thing about armadillos. Armadillos are like really, really, really interesting because they have these habitat restrictions. They're typically bordered by really deserty areas because they need a lot of water, and then also like cold areas, but most importantly, water. And so water is really interesting. If they're big flowing rivers, they don't have a really easy way to cross them, but they can swim, and they can swim in kind of two main ways. One of the ways is just a normal doggy paddle, just across a a small creek or maybe a pond, they can doggy paddle. If they need to, for a bigger area, they'll actually gulp oxygen into their body and blow up their, their stomach with air and their small intestines so that they float and then they can doggy paddle for farther without using up all their muscles. If it's a really small area without any current, they actually will just hold their breath and walk on the bottom of the water, through the water, and then up out the other side. They don't even act like the water's there, they just walk through it and come out the other side. That's because armadillos don't float. They have very, very little fat in their body and they have a ton of weight in that shell, so they've traded that off for the ability to float. So no fat in their body, very little floating going on. That's a good question's coming in, you guys. Thank you so much for Ooh. tuning in and watching our live streaming of armadillos, nine band armadillos. Hi Mimi, Isabella, hello mm. Cheryl in Pennsylvania, awesome job. Um, Liam wants to know why do they have a, such a long tail? I'm going to show you when I pick them up what they do with their tail. Okay, watch, watch closely. And while Ms. Michelle's doing that, you can think about some dinosaurs that you might have seen in the past with long tails. There used to be. Smack predators. Can you guys see that? Are you guys getting a good view of this? Those are lifespan. They they can live a long time. A long time. Long, especially for the size of mammal that they are, they yeah. live a very long time. Twenty years is not uncommon, and maybe up into the, the low twenties in captivity. So yeah. very long time, and they're going to reproduce fairly quickly, and they have kind of quadruplets every time they have a litter. So four babies every time. 
And those are um, distinctly one individual baby that's kind of like a quadruplet that, like you would be having quadruplets that are twins, or quadruplets that are exactly the same. So yeah. it's like, so I have it's a question. Like amazing. I have a question. It's, it's, it's <clears throat> my mind blowing. This is a question. Yes. Okay. They have quadruplets. Do they have girls, boys, or mixture? Ooh, they're they're poly embryonic. So let's see if you guys can guess if they so come if they're out. So they're poly embryonic. 50, 50 they, boy girl. If they become uh, out, all girl or all boy. So one a splits into divides four. Divides four times. So the original a. Oh, I don't know. That's a good question. Okay, so um, you guys are coming up with some really good questions. Joy says, how heavy are they? They weigh about five to eight. Um, sometimes the, the, they're a little bit bigger. Depends on if they're getting a lot of good food. Okay, so Atticus is on Tybee, and he wants to know who's their closest relative. Ooh. So, And then I'm going to answer that with the well, other question. So I can see. Lily, how many species of armadillo? So there are 21 extant, word of the day. Mm -hmm. Extinct. Mm -hmm. So if you know extinct, living in the wild, you know extinct, extinct is opposite. Yeah. So there's 21 species of armadillo in the in South America and North, uh, not North America. There's one in North America. Yeah. Well, Mexico might and have And like more. Central America. It's considered North America. Has like seven, I think, or yeah. eight. And 21. Down. So their closest relative would be another species of armadillo, whether it's the three banded, the um, short nosed armadillo, the Pink fairy armadillo, the giant, the pink fairy and the giant armadillo are critically endangered species, and those are like the extremes on the armadillo world. So the giant armadillo can weigh up to 135 pounds. Big armadillo, crazy, right? And the pink fairy would fit in the palm of your hand. Mm -hmm. So you know this is kind of, and it is the only one that we have in North America. Okay, and it does not roll in a ball like the three. And it doesn't even have nine bands here. What are um so what are their just their defense strategies? So because they have predators, like Sean and Leah wants to know. Oh um, yeah. Okay, so what kind of animal do you um some some animals do. They call them <laughs> possum on a half shell. It's terrible. I'm not gonna say that again. Um <laughs> uh so we have we stay. Coyotes, yeah. Um, coyotes are a good predator of an armadillo. Mm. Foxes. Bobbers? Bobcats, absolutely. Our most common feline that we have in North America, bobcats. Dogs. Dogs. Um, how about big raptors? Mm, maybe. Maybe a great horned owl grab up a baby armadillo. Yeah. Oh, and someone wants to know there are armadillos in Indiana. Actually, the record, they said they're, they have found them as far north as Indiana. Yeah. But they don't make it up there because yeah. like today there's three inches of snow on the ground it's chilly. And, and, and their diet is mostly insects oh. they eat insects 90 percent of coleopteran beetle larvae those little white alien grub looking things that you find in the soil um so if you have a frozen ground you're not gonna find a grub yeah sorry who did you pick up um i picked up rocky um she's our girl here um, so great, so many great questions. Okay, Carrie and somebody else wanted to know, do they really carry leprosy? So let's do a quick lesson since we're talking about infectious diseases in our world these days. Um, leprosy is a bacteria that creates um, a disease, Hansen's disease and leprosy. It's Mycobacterium leprosy. Mm -hmm. And because this animal is rooting around in the ground, um, they, are, they have a really poor immune system their low core body temperature, they pick up lots of protozoan diseases and bacterial diseases pretty easily. And someone did find out that they were uh, infected by leprosy by eating an undercooked armadillo. So uh, are, they can carry leprosy in their, on their body, um, but usually it's their flesh and you're gonna get it from eating undercooked okay, 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 armadillo. Okay. Um, and someone asked, are they considered a rabies vector? Now. Nature is always going to throw an exception. This is not considered a rabies vector. Rabies vectors have a high body core temperature. Mm -hmm. Their body core temperature, it's about 86 to 95 degrees Fahrenheit. So we're 98, right? And then cats and dogs, like getting up into the hundreds. 
So it's the hotter body temperature, the raccoons, the foxes, the bats, the skunks mm -hmm. that carry that disease more readily. They can incubate that virus and keep it going. Yeah. So not, I wouldn't consider them a rabies vector, but is it possible? Yeah. You know, yeah. I can't say no, never. I mean, nature will throw exceptions. It would also be weird if you got bit by an armadillo. It would be really weird. Um, the, because of bite. how they act and because of where their teeth are, it would be very, very odd. Um, oh, gosh, you're a good they also, um, uh, the people asking about the burrowing, if you might have seen, they have really large nails, and those spade shaped nails are very, very good at, at digging, and they can actually dig really fast. So, oh. in a couple oh. minutes, they can dig a hole that's. They really wanted to get away from a predator, and they knew the predator was coming pretty fast. They might be able to get to a nearby burrow, or they might be able to run into some deep cover, dig a quick burrow cover themselves with dirt, have only their back exposed, which is the hardest part of their body, and really protects them against predators. And so um, there are some anecdotes about them using gopher tortoise burrows mm -hmm. and yep. kind of stealing the show from them. Yeah. So yeah, they'll take another burrow if it's available. Yep. But you know, don't think armadillos are lost. They don't typically share a burrow either. Mm -hmm. Usually um, only during breeding season while they'll, they'll search each other out. They're trying to burrow right now. Um, I'm gonna do an impression of an armadillo burrowing. Okay, first of all, I'm not gonna use my face, but I'm gonna use my face, and I'm gonna use my body, and I'm gonna... <laughs> and then sometimes I'll get my back feet going. Hey, armadillo. You wanna show us how it's done? I think they want some more food mystery. Maybe we should get the plate of food out. Um, so, yeah, so they're so good at burrowing. Um, so if you think about that, do you think we could find them in the mountains of Georgia? Think about it. Give me your answers. Come on. Of live streaming is that we get to talk and interact with you. It's super awesome. Um, so, hi, Grady and Bennett, my friends. Uh, they say no snow here, but it's cold. Oh. Sorry. It's a little chilly today here at 60s um, and overcast and rainy. So they're eating their food. Can you guys catch that on the camera or not? Maybe we should pull it back a little bit more. Fiona and Chesney asked about, are they not? Question that depends on the season and the temperature. <laughs> so what's really interesting is they only like to be in that certain temperature zone that we talked about. And if it's too cold for them, it's gonna be probably oh. better for them to be out the warmest part of the day in the afternoon. So like in the spring and the fall, we see them more in the afternoon. Here now, as we start to warm up in the evening more, or maybe even at night if it's too hot. So they'll come out when the temperature gets to be around 60, 65 degrees or warmer. If it's up above 90, 95. Yeah, but if you guys can catch that on the video, they're chowing down. Yep. It's kind of fun to watch them. They have a um, really long... that they belong yeah, to. The, the, um, the have the tongue, yeah. um, but these guys here, um, they, they have to throw the food back, right? Because that's where the conical teeth are. So you watch their little head, their heads do like a little bobbing while they're eating. Um, I love this, this fact about them. They have ears like a rabbit. Mm -hmm. Shell like what animal? Mm, turtle. Turtle. So the Aztecs call this group of animals Turtle rabbits. Turtle. Love it. Hi, Fiona. She sees them at Fort Pulaski. Oh, I do too. Turtle. Turtle rabbit. Turtle. Audrey, do they have good hearing? Yeah. Better than vision. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. But what's their number one sensory world out there, everybody? Let us know. What is their sensory world that they live in? They I also have feel too, their, their sense of touch is really good because of they have this really long beard on their face, even the ladies have beards, you know, and so they're, they're rooting around if an animal gets uncovered and they miss it with their eyes and they don't smell it but it's wiggling, their, their little sensors will pick that up and they'll be able to grab it up and eat it. So it's really cool that they have those very sensitive uh, hairs underneath their body and then around their face they have a lot of them. Yeah, so their, their number one sensory um, world is driven by their nose, their olfactory, their sense of smell. They can smell a beetle grub six 
inches under soil, like half of a foot underneath the soil, and they would dig down and unbury that thing before you can say armadillo. Their head is like a shovel. Gets through there. Um, how someone wants to know. <laughs> Oh my God, if you haven't seen that. Super cute. You're gonna you do, do an this, impression do this history? little hook and, hook and tuck. Tuck into the oh. backwards scooch <laughs> like this. It's very, very fun. Um, they like to move hay that way. Um, hay, um, right now that, uh, that they have a, a plastic. And then they'll fill that with hay and soil stay nice and warm but in the wild they would use grasses and things and they um hi, hi smell yay darlene marcia and melissa good job mm. you got it right so let's talk about um sensory debris and why do it by cars all the oh, time yeah. because they're i know i don't wait wait Armadillos don't smell cars coming. Nope. Right? They don't see cars coming. Mm -hmm. They might hear a car, maybe. So their first instinct if there's trouble is to run as fast mm -hmm. as they can. But if it's too late because something it's that amazing superpower that they have. No, it's Who knows? Cool. Their superpower. What they can do that is a defense strategy, which it doesn't work for them all the time. And anybody out there know what they do? I like to say that they can um, do something that's, sim that's similar to what Superman can do. Yeah? Yeah. Able to leap tall buildings in a no, single bound? No, just small humans. <laughs> leap small humans in a single bound. Okay, so if these were wild armadillo and they're not, sometimes you can... The wind is blowing your scent away and they're not really focused on what's going on. And if you walk up to an armadillo and you try to touch that armadillo, very position, four feet. And um, up about this tall. And so think about that. If I'm a dog or I'm a, a predator and I'm on top and I'm like, this, I'm gonna get mm -hmm. punched with their big hard bony plates mm -hmm. and then I'm gonna like you know the birds are gonna be swirling around my head I'm gonna be like oh what happened to me and then the armadillo is gonna boogie and scoot away as fast as they can now think about that with a car situation yeah. mm, doesn't work out so well true story I've actually had people tell me that they have had armadillos jump up and punch their gas tank underneath their car mm -hmm. and destroy their gas tank six hundred dollar yeah. uh, thousand dollar fix and then I've also had people one person tell me they drove a, a mini Cooper and they had an armadillo almost clear their jumped up and hit the back roof of their car it's crazy yeah. Marie Rodriguez hello do you know what wor, do you wor, I can't read that mm -hmm. worry when they will jump when you reach down to pick them up so our, our, our armadillos are that wild they are used to us being in here and around so they've kind of lost the jumpiness but we did have one, um, we had an armadillo, I don't know if it was Houdini or Bronco, one of the boys, one time. I came in to get him, and he didn't want to come. And so I was reaching around to get him, and he started sucker punching me on the ground in my hand into the So there's only one time that's ever happened. Yeah, they're very strong, and it's important to remember that an animal's weight is, is beneficial to them when they're thinking about how they attack a predator. So if you think about... Um, getting dropped on your foot or thrown up in your face, that's gonna hurt really bad, so. They're digging a burrow pretty They're quickly right now. Doing the back feet shuffle, the front feet, back feet shuffle. Um, I don't know if I can even not let them do that just yet until this program's over. Um, Maureen wants to know, what do you do if you I'm too much. If they're in your garden, if they're digging up, remember they're not going after your plants necessarily. They're going after the insect larvae that are in the soil. Um, they are they're super easy to trap. Mm -hmm. You can just find a burrow and then put a trap right on the mouth of the burrow, and they will walk right up into it. Yeah. Um, and you just don't want to relocate them just anywhere. Um, you 
I don't know exactly what to say about relocation. Maybe somebody can speak up about that. Oh, Melissa wants me to sing the Armadillo song. Oh <laughs> I don't know if I remember. I the wrote, verses. I wrote, and I sing it, it's kind of educational. And it goes, Armadillo, Armadillo, sniffing all around. Armadillo, Armadillo. Yeah, we'll put a video up. Make yeah. famous. Armadillos are, are amazing with their, their jumping capabilities, but they're also really, really good at running. And I think it's super amazing to think about how they run so fast with as heavy as they are covered with that bony plate. So, there they go. could you give me a thumbs up if you think you could win in a foot race against an armadillo. Give me a thumbs up if you think you could win. And then I'm gonna wait. Thumbs down, thumbs down, I don't thumbs think down. I could. They're about three to four times faster than a human. They can go as fast as your car drives around in like a residential neighborhood, up to 30 miles per hour, maybe 35 on a short sprint. So they're sprinters to get away from those predators, and then they're gonna be diggers to get away from that kind of secondary uh, threat if a predator was able to chase and keep up. So very fast, very, very fast. Yes, the little armored one. So we did say this is the nine banded, right? Yeah. And so um, you can count their bands next time you come visit us and see there might be sometimes nine to 11. There's not yeah, these guys nine. are eight actually. Well, is it what... depends on if you count the back one a band or not. Yeah, so the, the middle bands in, in the US, we have eight banded armadillos because of where they were introduced from. Um, the nine-banded oh armadillo is more my like Central America. Um, in the northern region, we have the eight-banded in kind of Mexico. Um, and then if we think about going down into South America, we get more bands down there. So nine-banded armadillo is really interesting misnomer um, for some of our northern individuals who have less bands than nine. Okay, I just want to show you something. You can see this? Can you see this? Okay, so an armadillo is also are really hard to turn over. Oh yeah, you can't flip You them. can't flip an armadillo. If you, if you have hands, you can. But if you don't have hands, you're a dog. <laughs> they just, they're so low to the ground, they hold the ground. And they're, why do they want to do that? Why do they want to protect that belly? Anybody know out there? All right, Jessica wants to know, my mom has issues with armadillos digging up her yard. What could she do to keep them entertained? <laughs> Um, so armadillos are interesting in that, like we said, that they're going to be rooting around. And so what humans do is they plant these amazing green lawns and they have these beautiful lawns and then the grubs move in and they're like, ooh, a beautiful buffet. Yeah. So something that you can do that we don't necessarily subscribe to here at Oatland because we hate to kill living things a ton, but you can put a grub X down on your lawn, um, that'll kill the grubs off if the material goes away they probably will go away as well yeah it becomes a real problem the only way it would be to trap them and then remove, remove them, them. Yeah. yeah um so uh i can't see who it is jason are they related to opossums mm. not not in the order no not the same order um they're in the same phylum yeah i don't know if they're in the same class as uh, yeah, they're mammalia. They're mammalia. They're class. So, so they're in the same class, not the same. And they're in, yeah. So they're order. they're not in the same order. The yeah. order is Singulata and Singulata, like Erica mm -hmm. said earlier, are the sloths, anteaters, and armadillos. Mm -hmm. um, opossums are in their own group of organ, an, uh, order. Yeah. Um, they're they're didelphi. Marsupiales. Yeah. Fiona wants to know why don't they have armor on their belly? Ooh Gosh, yeah. Life would be really hard. <laughs> really hard if you had armor on your belly, right? Um, yeah. For giving birth or for other bodily functions. Or for nursing your young. Nursing your young, yep, because yeah. they are mammals. Mm -hmm. Even though they're not covered in hair, Mr. E did say earlier they have 
whiskers and they have a, do have a little bit of a hairy uh, belly. And then the exposed skin in between straight. their bands, they actually do have hair there as well. So they're they're a hairy individual, even though they I'm might not look like it. I'm gloves because they're dirty, not because I don't like it. Okay, see the little hairs on his little belly? Oh, he doesn't like it, it's so his belly. His little whiskers. Oh, calmness. And there are little hairs. I don't know the lighting isn't great, but you can see her. that there. Okay, okay. I'm going to bring you way back here so you can watch me. Why don't you go to these logs? We gave you these logs. They're like, um, we're, we're tired. We ate. They don't go for a nap. Um, if you're an active animal, you're active because you're doing a few things, mainly trying to find food. If you got all your food found, you just go to sleep. So I think we can learn a lot of lessons from, from them as well, right? Yeah, they do sleep yeah. a lot. Just relax. Hang oh, out. Whoa, here they come. All right. So we have a, um, a Savannah Chatham County Public School System student here in the uh, the film degree at uh, Savannah Arts Academy here filming for us. Maddie, thank you so much for coming today. Um, she is uh, working her her degree at, at Savannah Arts really well with us here. She's getting to use it. Um, we want to thank our FU members, all of you out there and our board members that are here helping us every week to make this happen. Mm -hmm. um, we want to tell you that Savannah Chatham County Public School System is going to be having hosting a channel. Oh yeah, this Comcast is super cool. Channel, and you can find educational materials if you're looking for stuff to do with your, your little ones at home. Um, and this video hopefully will be on there as well. Yeah. Um, we're also, uh, we have a YouTube channel that we're working on and these videos will be po posted, posted there as well. Maybe you'll get a musical number or two on there. Oh yeah, Miss maybe. Oh, Mr. E helped me write this song, so you know. But it's a channel 195. What? 195. How do you find channel 195? I, I just was reading the number on there. Comcast. Comcast. 195. All right, all you cable people out there. Get on channel 195 and watch us, watch uh, our Savannah Chatham County public school system. Um, I wish you watch what's going on over here. There's a lot of dirt flying through the air. Yeah, they're digging There's like some crazy. some burrowing going on. Um, so don't fear the nine-banded armadillo. Yeah. They are harmless. Um, they are not going to transfer diseases to you unless you try to eat them. Um, mm -hmm. They might tear a garden up a little bit, but they're going to help you ultimately get the grubs out that you eat your lawn. Mm -hmm. So, like Mr. E said, you keep grub X, you want mm -hmm. to get rid of them. But we are not big, I'm not a big proponent of pesticides and insecticides because yeah. you don't discriminate against other insects as well. Yeah. Um, the armadillos are super burrowers. They are moving further, further north as the climate lets them. Mm -hmm. They're weather dependent. Um, they, they need to have nice, soft, buttery soils to burrow in. And um, that was our animal today. And we just want a few favors from you guys. Um, make sure you share if you like this video. Make sure also to give us suggestions on which animals you'd like to see that we haven't done yet. Or maybe even just topics. Maybe you want to know about trees or fungus or um, building shelters in the woods or learning how to, um, I don't know, all those things and are some we'd love to teach them to you as well. Yeah, so share this with your friends and keep coming back for more Food Ventures. Thanks guys, stay safe. <laughs>